Reading has always been a goal of mine. In an era dominated by short videos and social media platforms, I feel an urge to push back against that trend, and reading seems like the best way to do so. In the past 60 days, I have immersed myself in nine captivating books, including Li Shi in Chang'an, Green-Haired Monster, Starting from the Extreme, Gross Hacker, etc. It has been a long time since I have devoted so much time to reading ever since my junior high school years. If you were to ask me what reading has brought me over the past 60 days, you may not find a dramatically transformative answer. I haven't become a suave, knowledgeable, and eloquent person overnight, and it's unrealistic to expect such a dramatic change in such a short time. However, I can confidently say that my leisure time has become more fulfilling and my habits have changed. Previously, I would mindlessly scroll through social media on my phone during idle moments such as waiting in line or before bedtime. But now when I feel bored, the first thought that comes into my mind is not my phone, but reading. It's surprising to discover that I have managed to finish several books during my daily subway commute. I never thought that these snippets of time could be so productive. Compared to the fleeting stimulation of electronic devices or technology, reading provides a gentle and prolonged sense of comfort. Here was a time when my weekly screen time report showed that I have spent more than 7 hours a day on my phone. That is to say, almost one third of my day was spent on my phone, and that is insane. I began to question the meaning of my life. What was the point of spending my time looking at the high quality photos of others' good looking figure, their overflowing talents, or their successful lives online? What did I gain from all of this? Was I being disciplined, ambitious, or making any progress at all? Obviously, the answer is no. Over the past two months, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly what I have gained from my reading experience. But one thing for sure is that I am constantly expanding my knowledge and exploring the limits of my understanding. Reading has exposed me to so many subjects and topics that I would have not encountered otherwise. It has allowed me to develop my own perspectives and insights. I always feel that books, just like movies, can make our limited life infinitely longer. In a book, you can witness the lives of different characters, experiencing their joys and sorrows. You can travel through time from an era of officials worrying about Yang Guifei's leeches to the age of wandering earth, and it is amazing. Books offer all of us an opportunity equally to live a colorful life, even in seemingly short, um, ordinary life. Where you cannot reach, words will carry you there, and where you cannot experience life, books will introduce you to it. I once had this question too. Since eventually I would probably forget most of the books I've ever read. What's the point of reading? There was an answer in Zhihu that impressed me deeply. When I was a child, I ate so many food that I can't remember right now, but I can be sure that some of them has become my bones and blood. Reading also brings about changes in people in the same way. As some all said, reading a lot changes your appearance naturally, Many times you may think that the books you've read have vanished like smoke, but in fact, they still exist within your temperament, speech, and boundless mind. Humans always habitually overestimate the impact of their behavior on the present and underestimate the impact on the long term. Luo Xiang said that we read because we are ignorant, and the more we read, the more we recognize our own ignorance. Non-utilitarian reading make us aware of our insignificance, cultivate our humility, enrich our inner selves, and help us resist external vanity. When it comes to reading, I believe there's no need to overly fetishize or exaggerate its value. The benefits of reading depend not only on whether you read or not, but more importantly, what and how you read. And everyone has their own preferred channels of acquiring information. There's no need to criticize or belittle any of them. That being said, 
I do agree with the title of Summers and Moms' book. Reading is a portable sanctuary. For me, I relish delving into the multifaceted lives of humans, savoring the elegant and flamboyant language of skilled writers, and reveling in the small world I've constructed for myself, which brings me peace and a sense of fulfillment. As for acquiring knowledge, the saying "the accumulation of learning is by daily increase," and the accumulation of virtue is by daily renewal, is by no means achieved overnight. The Greek philosopher Zeno once likened knowledge to a circle with what you know on the circumference and what you don't know outside of it. The more you know, the larger the circle, and the more unknowns and puzzles you encounter. Therefore, the more you learn. The more ignorant you feel, conversely, the less you know. The more you think you know. Currently, I'm engrossed in legions, remembering one and forgetting three too. Well,、um, I'm not sure about my translation, but there are some sentences in her reading diary chapter that I particularly enjoy and would like to share with you. 全都是毫无选择的阅读，全然接受，鲸吞海纳，吃干抹净。然而，渐渐的。阅读的海洋中，渐渐浮起明月，能记起语句，暗流涌动，任准一个方向推动小船，扯动风帆；而忘记的那些，则是大海本身，沉静的荡漾，同时也是世界本身。我想，这世界其实从来不曾在意过谁的认可与理解，它只是存在着，撑开世界应有的范围。对了，之前说的都是少年时期的阅读，那么后来呢？惭愧，后来几乎不怎么读书了，各种原因，直到这几年才开始重新大量阅读。而且对现在的我来说，阅读这件事已经渗透进日常生活的一举一动之中，成为了日常习惯。什么都是读，什么都是学习与获得。世态百相，人间万状，阅读行为无法停止。我仍稳稳当当行进在当年的航道上。明月已经升至中天，当我再次拿起一本书的时候，总感觉一切仍然刚刚开始。当年的耳语者还不曾走开，这对我一个人透露唯一的秘密。好啦，这就是本期视频的全部内容，感谢你们观看到这里。书中自有黄金屋，书中自有颜如玉，希望你们也能渐渐的爱上阅读。